Hare Krishna, my dear devotees. Happy Balaram Purnima. I will begin by singing the Mangala Charna prayers and leading a short kirtan. And then I will speak about Lord Balaram from Srimad Bhagavatam. Sahagana Raghunatham Vitam Stam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savajutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitang Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nivishesha Shunyavadi Paschatyadeshatarine Namaste 
Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Kadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 
Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada. Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada. Jaya Guru Deva, Jaya Guru Deva, Guru Deva, Jaya Guru Deva. Jayam Vishnu Bhad Paramhansa Pari Prajak Charya Stotras to Sri Simad Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Kijai. Is Khan founder of Charya Srila Prabhupada Kijai. Jayam Vishnu Bhad Paramhansa Pari Prajak Charya Stotras to Sri Simad Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Prabhupada Kijai. Ananta Koti Vaishnav Rindi Kijai. Namacharya Srila Hari Das Thakur Kijai. Prem se kaho si Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Dvaita Gadadha Arshiva Sri Gaur Bhaktivrinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Sham Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Navadweep Dham Ki Jai Jamuna Mai Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Salveta Bhaktivrinda Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Garanga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, my dear devotees. Happy Balaram Purnima. We shall read from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 8. And to begin, I'll read a portion of the uh, chapter summary. One day, Vasudev sent for Gargamuni, the family priest of the Yadu Vamsa. And thus Gargamuni went to the house of Nanda Maharaj, who received him very well, and requested him to give names to Krishna and Balaram. 
Garga Muni, of course, reminded Nanda Maharaj that Kamsa was looking for the son of Devaki and said that if he performed the ceremony very gorgeously, the ceremony would come to the notice of Kamsa, who would then suspect that Krishna was the son of Devaki. Nanda Maharaj therefore requested Gargamuni to perform the ceremony without anyone's knowledge, and Gargamuni did so. Because Balaram, the son of Rohini, increases the transcendental bliss of others, his name is Rama. And because of his extraordinary strength, he is called Baladev. He attracts the Yadus to follow his instructions, and therefore his name is Shankarshan. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Om Namo So we read from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 8, Text 1. Shishuko Vacha Garga Purohito Rajan Yadunam Samahatapa Rajam Jagamanandasya Vasudeva Prachoditaha. Shukadeva Goswami said, O Maharaj Parikshit, the priest of the Yadu dynasty, namely Gargamuni, who was highly elevated in austerity and penance, was then inspired by Vasudev to go see Nanda Maharaj at his home. Tam Jisra Parama Prita Prititriya Kritanjali Anarcha Tod Shayadiya Pranipata Parasaram. When Nanda Maharaj saw Gargamuni present at his home, Nanda was so pleased that he stood up to receive him with folded hands. Although seeing Gargamuni with his eyes, Nanda Maharaj could appreciate that Gargamuni was at Hokshaja, that is, he was not an ordinary person seen by material senses. Supavishtam krita tityam gira sunya tyanmuninam nandaya vita bravid brahman purnasya karanamakim. When Gargamuni had been properly received as a guest and was very comfortably seated, Nanda Maharaj submitted with gentle and submissive words, My dear sir, because you are a devotee, you are full in everything, yet my duty is to serve you. Kindly order me. What can I do for you? Well, from these interactions, we can see the uh, sublime relationships uh, among the devotees, how uh, respectful they were of one another, and how appreciative they were, and how each one wanted to render service to the other. Mahadvi Chalanam Rinam Grihanam Dina Chaitasam Nishreya Saya Bhagavan Kalpate Nanyata Kvachit. O my Lord, O great devotee, persons like you move from one place to another, not for their own interests, but for the sake of poor hearted Grihastas. Otherwise, 
they have no interest in going from one place to another. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. As factually stated by Nanda Maharaj, Gargamuni, being a devotee, had no needs. Similarly, when Krishna comes, he has no needs, for he is Purna, Atmarama. Purna means complete, and Atmarama means self satisfied. Nonetheless, he descends to this material world to protect the devotees and vanish miscreants. Paritranaya sadhunam, vinashaya chaduskritam. This is the mission of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and devotees also have the same mission. One who executes the mission of para upakar, performing welfare activities for people in general, is recognized by Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as being very, very dear to him. Natachasman Manusheshu Kaschan Me Priyakritma. The quotation from the end of the Bhagavad Gita, where uh, Lord Krishna says that uh, the preacher is most dear to him, and there will never be one more dear. And in the end, uh, devotional service is guaranteed, and he will go back home, back to Godhead. Similarly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has advised this para upakar, and he has especially advised the inhabitants of India. Bharata Bhumit Ehaila Manusya Janmayara Janma Sarthakari Kara Para Upakara. One who has taken his birth as a human being in the land of India, Bharat Varsha, should make his life successful and work for the benefit of all other people. C.C. Adi 941. On the whole, the duty of a pure Vaishnav devotee is to act for the welfare of others. Nanda Maharaj could understand that Gargamuni had come for this purpose and that his own duty was now to act according to Gargamuni's advice. Thus he said, Please tell me what is my duty. This should be the attitude of everyone. The Varnashram Society is organized into eight divisions, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, and Sanyas. Nanda Maharaj represented himself as Grihinam, a householder. A brahmachari factually has no needs, but grihi, householders, are engaged in sense gratification. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 2.44, bhogaishwarya prasaktanam taya parita chaitasam. Everyone has come to this material world for sense gratification. And those Excuse me, and the position of those who are too attached to sense gratification and who therefore accept the Grihasta ashram is very precarious. Since everyone in this material world is searching for sense gratification, Grihastas are required to be trained as Mahat, great Mahatmas. Therefore, Nanda Maharaj specifically used the word Mahad Vichalanam. Gargamuni had no interest to serve by going to Nanda Maharaj, but Nanda Maharaj, as a Grihasta, was always perfectly ready to receive instructions from a Mahatma to gain the real benefit in life. Thus he was ready to execute Gargamuni's order. For the sake of time, I'll just read the translation. O oh, great saintly person, you have compiled the astrological knowledge by which one can understand past and present unseen things. By the strength of this knowledge, any human being can understand what he has done in his past life 
and how it affects his present life. This is known to you. My Lord, you are the best of the brahmanas, especially because you are fully aware of the Jyoti Shastra, the astrological science. Therefore, you are naturally the spiritual master of every human being. This being so, since you have kindly come to my house, kindly execute the reformatory activities for my two sons. Gargamuni said, My dear Nanda Maharaj, I am the priestly guide of the Yadu dynasty. This is known everywhere. Therefore, if I perform the purificatory processes for your sons, Kamsa will cons consider them the sons of Devaki. So, yeah, Kamsa had heard that, uh, that the eighth son of Devaki would kill him. And uh, so when the eighth son, Krishna, appeared in the prison house of Kamsa, Vasudev carried him to uh, Vrindavan and exchanged him for the baby girl to which uh, Mother Yashoda had just given birth. And Mother Yashoda, being exhausted from the labor of childbirth, was not aware if she had given birth to a son or a daughter. So Vasudev left Krishna uh, and, and, and took the daughter uh, and, and returned to, uh, to Mathura. So anyway, Gargamuni said, My dear Nanda Maharaj, I am the priestly guide of the Yadu dynasty. This is known everywhere. Therefore, if I perform the purificatory processes for your sons, Kamsa will consider them the sons of Devaki. Nanda Maharaj said, My dear great sage, if you think that you're performing this process of purification will make Kamsa suspicious, then secretly chant the Vedic hymns and perform the purifying process of the second birth here in the cow shed of my house without the knowledge of anyone else, even my relatives, for this process of purification is essential. Sukadeva Goswami continued, having thus been especially requested by Nanda Maharaj to do that which he already desired to do, Gargamuni performed the name-giving ceremony for Krishna and Balaram in a solitary place. Gargamuni said, and this is our, um, to say, our subject of tonight, uh, Balaram. Gargamuni said, This child, the son of Rohini, will give all happiness to his relatives and friends by his transcendental qualities. Therefore, he will be known as Rama. And because he will manifest extraordinary bodily strength, he will also be known as Bala. Moreover, because he unites two families, Vasudev's family and the family of Nanda Maharaj, he will be known as Shankarshan. Purport. Baladev was actually the son of Devaki, but he was transferred from Devaki's womb to that of Rohini. This fact was not disclosed. Gargamuni did disclose to Nanda Maharaj that Balaram would be known as Shankarshan because of uniting two families, the Yadu Vamsa and the Vamsa of Nanda Maharaj, one of which was known as Kshatriya and the other as Vaisha. Both families had the same original forefather, 
the only difference being that Nanda Maharaj was born of a Vaishya wife, whereas Vasudeva was born of a Kshatriya wife. Later, Nanda Maharaj married a Vaishya wife, and Vasudeva married a Kshatriya wife. So although the families of Nanda Maharaj and Vasudeva both came from the same father, they were divided as Kshatriya and Vaishya. Now Baladev united them, and therefore he was known as Shankarshan. So then um, Gargamuni proceeds to speak about Krishna, who is not our particular subject tonight. He'll be our subject on Janmashtami, which is coming up. Um, so this is, uh, this is uh, the prediction of Gargamuni in relation to Lord Balaram. And uh, it gives some indication of the glories of Lord Balaram. One year at the Ardhukumbha Mela in Allahabad, during Srila Prabhupada's presence, there was a dispute between Prabhupada's disciples, uh, Madhuvisa Prabhu and uh, Yamuna Devi. And uh, Madhuvisa Prabhu said, there's no difference between Krishna and Balaram, except that Krishna is black and Balaram is white. And that is stated in the Shastra. And Yamuna Devi said, but there is another difference because Krishna is the only enjoyer of Srimati Radharani. So they were having this uh, dispute and Tamal Krishna Goswami brought the matter to Srila Prabhupada. And he told Srila Prabhupada that uh, that that Maruvisa says that there's no difference between Krishna and Balaram. Only Krishna is black and Balaram is white. And Prabhupada said, he's right. Then Tamal Krishna Goswami says, but Yamuna Devi says that there, there is another difference because Krishna is the only enjoyer of Srimati Radharani. And Srila Prabhupada said, yes, she is right. And Tamal Krishna Goswami said, but they're both saying different things. They both can't be right. And Srila Prabhupada said, yes, you are right. <laughs> 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 so then <laughs> Krishna goes on, he said, well, then who is right? And Srila Prabhupada said, you decide. <laughs> so, all right, my dear devotees, thank you for listening so patiently and attentively. And now if any of you have any uh, questions or any comments or any reflections you would like to share, please raise your hands. Yes. Yeah, is there a microphone? Yes, it's coming. First of all, thank you for a marvelous discourse for your thank association. You. Um, I remember reading somewhere, I'm not sure what the source is, that um, someone said that Prabhupada was a Shaktivesh avatar of Balaram, or in the mood of Balaram. I, I'm uh, such a neophyte that I can't claim to understand that, but perhaps you can shed some light on it. Yes, uh, it is said that Srila Prabhupada was a Shakti Avesh avatar. There are different kinds of avatars, and uh, Shakti Avesh, Shakti Avesh means that he is empowered with the Shakti or the potency of, of the Lord. And Srila Prabhupada himself has said so. He, he uh, would quote the verse from Chaitanya. Charitamrita, Krishna Shakti Vina Nahi Tara Pravartana. Without without being empowered by Krishna, uh, the potency of Krishna, uh, one cannot spread the holy names. 
So, yes, we accept that Srila Prabhupada was a Shakti of Ashavatar. Um, and I always saw him as uh, say following in the footsteps of Lord Nityananda. Uh, yeah, he was like, a, yeah, I, w- I would say he was empowered by the Shakti of Lord Nityananda. <laughs> Which reminds me of another statement of Srila Prabhupada's, which um, I really like. Jai Shishu Radhagiri Thari Ki Jai Shishu Gorni Thai Ki Jai Shri Baladev Jagannath Baladev and Subhadra Ki Jai. Jai. So Srila Prabhupada said that to approach Radha and Krishna, you need the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. To get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, you need the mercy of Lord Nityananda. And to get the mercy of Lord Nityananda, you have to approach people like Jagai and Madhai. So that's, that's Lord Nityananda's merciful mood, and that was certainly Srila Prabhupada's mood. Yes, His Holiness Bhajan Raya and Swami Maharaj. I'm wondering if you have any recommendations or advice on how we should pray on this day. Well, Srila Prabhupada said if we have any no difficulty or problem, we can place it uh, before Lord Balaram. And uh, so we could do that. And uh, yeah, we can pray to be, be an instrument of his mercy um, yeah, and be worthy of uh, his representative, Srila Prabhupada, in, in, in our service. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, um, we definitely hear a lot of different opinions about astrology in this movement. Um, but I noticed that throughout the Bhagavatam, uh, generally, anytime something important happens, there's an astrology consult, uh, consultation going on. Um, how do we look at it? Um, well, I've found that devotees do um, consider astrology in making matches and there's some value to that to see how the horoscopes match Um, but when a devotee surrenders to Krishna um, you know his his destiny is changed When we were with Srila Prabhupada in, um, I think it was indoor, so a a palm reader came, and uh, we didn't know what to make of him, so we asked Srila Prabhupada, and Srila Prabhupada, yes, let him. So he's looking at the devotees' palms and looking at their lines and giving different predictions and, you know, this one will go back to Godhead, this one will have to take birth again and so many things. And then uh, when the palm reader left, the devotees asked Srila Prabhupada what they should think of the whole thing. And Srila Prabhupada said, you know, when you clap your hands in the RT, all your lines are wiped off. (laughs) Uh, 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा महाराज आई वॉज रीडिंग दिस पर्पर्ड फ्रॉम द इलेवेंथ कैंटो फिफ्थ चैप्टर थर्टी टू वेरी फेमस वर्स कृष्णा वर्णम तुषा कृष्णम सो इन द पर्पर्ड प्रभुपाद मैंशंस दैट दैट इज कन्फर्म्ड इन श्रीमद भागवतम बाय गर्ग मुनि हु इज सेड दैट ऑल डो द चाइल्ड कृष्णा वॉज ब्लैकिश ही ऑल्सो अपियर्स इन थ्री अदर कलर्स रेड वाइट एंड येलो he exhibited his white and red complexions in the sati and treta ages respectively so i just wanted to know like more about this uh, white complexion in the sati yuga and red in the treta yuga what does it which incarnation does it represent oh well it's, it's just that i mean it is here i didn't um read it because uh you know we were focusing on lord balara but um yeah he says many nice things about krishna so here i think is the verse to which you're referring translation your son krishna appears as an incarnation in every millennium in the past he assumed three different colors white red and yellow and now he has appeared in a blackish color purport partially explaining the position of lord krishna and partially covering the facts gargamuni indicated your son is a great personality and he can change the color of his body in different ages the word brihanatha indicates that krishna is free to make his choice in other words he is the supreme personality of god and may therefore do whatever he desires in the vedic literature the different colors assumed by the personality of god had in different millenniums are stated and therefore when gargamuni said your son has assumed these colors he indirectly said he is the supreme personality of godhead it may be noted that sri lajiva goswami in his book krama sandarbha has enunciated the purport of this verse in every millennium krishna appears in a different form either as white red or yellow but this time he personally appeared in his original blackish form and as predicted by gargamuni exhibited the power of narayan because in this form the supreme personality exhibits himself fully his name is krishna the all attractive in the 11th canto of shrimad bhagavatam describes the incarnations for each yuga in chronological order the bhagavatam says krite suklash chatur bahu tretayam rakta varno so dwapare bhagavan shyama and krishna varnam twisa krishna we actually see that in kali yuga Bhagavan has appeared in pita varna or a yellow color as gor sundar so one should understand that although in some yugas some of the colors are prominent in every yuga whenever krishna appears all the colors are present krishna varnam twisa krishna Although Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears without Krishna or a blackish color he is understood to be Krishna himself well, Okay one more Maharaj Hari Krishna uh, thank you so much for a wonderful lecture um for the benefit of all of us uh, i was wondering if you could expand a bit on parupkar uh, what is really uh, 
our tradition obviously uh, uh, is the most important aspect of parupkar or the benefit for all of us yeah parupkar brahmanda brahmite kon bhagivana jeev guru krishna prasadi bhai bhakti lata beej so parupkar means uh, welfare activities for others uh bharata bhumi te hoilu Aila Manusya Janma Jar, Janma Sartha Kari Kara Paru Bakar. So Bharata Bhumi Te, anyone who's taken his uh, birth in Bharat, which often means India, but in a way it also refers to the planet. Uh, Bharata Bhumi Te, Manusya Janma, who's taken his birth as a human being. Bharata Bhumi Te Manusya Janma Hoyla Jar Janma Sarthakari Para Upakar. So Janma Sarthakari means he should make his life successful and Para Upakar means he should engage in welfare activities for others. So we make our lives successful, Janma Sartha, by becoming Krishna conscious and then when we're Krishna conscious uh, we can do para upakar, we can do welfare activities for others by giving them Krishna consciousness. Lord Chaitanya is very merciful, Srila Prabhupada is very merciful. We're also meant to be so. In fact, once uh, Srila Prabhupada said that Lord Chaitanya is Mahavara Nyaya, you know, he was addressed by Rupa Goswami, Namo Mahavaranyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Gauratvishe Namaha. Um, he's most munificent, and Srila Prabhupada said that similarly the uh, temple presidents in Iskand should also be most munificent. <laughs> and we have the best example is Holiness Bhadri Narayan Swami Maharaj. Well, I was thinking of Balaram. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Any other questions or comments? Yes? Yes, yes. As you wrote a book about the final days of life, I just have a question about that. Um, how It's kind of like a two-part question. How do we deal with the emotions of somebody who has passed away, but then also how do we deal with regret about what we didn't say or what we didn't do with that person while they were still here? Hmm. Yes, uh, that book, Life's Final Exam, Death and Dying from the Vedic Perspective, well, we should, you know, express our appreciation and gratitude for others uh, while they're still alive. There was a professor at Brandeis University, where I also was a student, and uh, he observed I think his name was Maury Schwartz. He was in the sociology department. He observed that after a person passes away, then people come forward and say all the nice things about him. So Maury Schwartz had the idea uh, to have a, a, a funeral for himself while he was still alive. <laughs> 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 so people could express themselves to him while he was still there, and he could also hear what they had to say. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Oh, there was a, was there another part to your question? Um, how do you deal with the emotions of the person? You do need to start moving on. She's got a second part. Great. She said it's okay. She said she'll let it go. I'll be around if she wants to uh, pursue it further. I'll entertain her. 
All right, my dear devotees. So, uh, yes, thank you for coming to the temple on this auspicious occasion. The, the temple room is packed, which is very encouraging. And so now what is next? Yes, yes, please. <laughs> no, no, give give him a mic. You thank the devotees for coming. On behalf of the devotee community, I wanted to thank you for coming. There's only one problem. There's only one problem. When you come, then it makes us want you to come more. <laughs> so we're hoping this is a, a future, a series of future <laughs> visits. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah, it was a pleasure to spend time with all of you, and I hope to come again and again. <laughs>